Hello viewers, well concluding our coverage at the recent Batsy event, it's been a few days hasn't it, it's been a little bit quiet since we've seen any news, but uh, what we have here now is uh, Ken Block's runs uh, and of course uh, uh, some brief uh, sort of sound bites from the interview. Uh, our dirt free coverage will continue after Easter, uh, hopefully we'll be having some new code and we'll be able to show you some new sections so we have a ton of dirt coverage coming as well and don't forget our new channel which I'm putting together now which is uh, just below, if you go onto the channel page you'll see VVV Gamer or whatever it's going to be called, uh, do go on that and you'll see my general gaming page as well so I'll be doing some other stuff as well, I think we've got op the new Operation Flashpoint this week so showing you a bit of that. Um, and that's it really viewers, uh, when the time comes I do get a copy, uh, I'll be taking requests on what tracks and car combinations you all want to see and trying to put in some decent times here and there as well, but more to come, check out a bit of Ken. <laughs> oh! Ken Block going for it, some really lucky people getting a ride in those cars, let's check out a bit more of the Battersea uh, Jim Carna run for ourselves. Hello viewers, so here we are then for a bit of Jim Carner 3.5 action. Ken's ready at the wheel. And away he goes. Around the far section, over the dirt. See plumes of dirt over there coming up. Give him a good slide, appropriately behind the uh, truck that says dirt on it. Through the skips. Around the pole. We'll all be doing this very soon. It's this tight hairpin section. Very tight around there, avoiding the barrels. Past the containers. Just under the truck. A good score from Ken so far. And the skips again. Now around the pole, the far section. into the spin dryer section keeping it gentle for the passengers lucky passengers in the car of course having a great time in there kicking up all the dust on the course it's great to see it this time of day of course like I say it's got that kind of dirt glow about it here evening glow oh, and a great slide over the dirt must feel fantastic in the car Slight donut there before back to base. Okay, viewers, so we're going to be on for a second run now. Another lucky, uh, lucky person in the car going for it. Round over the dirt in the background. Pass the skips. Get the car in there, nice slide on the tarmac. Obviously sliding on the dirt as well, around the pole. Fantastic. Through the hairpin, very tight in that section. Quickly on the power. Lost the containers, fantastic. Try to zoom in a little bit for you guys. Spin dryer section again. Now, of course, it's worth remembering, of course, this is Ken's rally car, not his Jim Carter car. So he can't do absolutely everything as he would. Over the dirt section now. A nice slide, not as big as before. Still great fun. If you're in that car, I tell you, being shaken around. Finishing another run. So here we go then. Third run. Away we go. Down the far side there of the dirt. Huge dirt in there. Now we are supposed to be going in the power station at some point. So we're going to save that. And he's gone in there. Wait for him to come out again. Keep the 
saying that should be done as a big screen. Just until Ken doing it, never flying out again. Just out of range. Here he comes then, towards the skips. Taking a different line this time. And the old lamp post. And a different line on this one, a bit quicker. A bit more speed. Cool side. I mentioned again that this is Ken's WRC rally car, not his Jim Carner car. So it does handle slightly differently. It is a little bit more challenging for him to actually get the uh, slides he wants. Uh, for me, it was just the way that I actually get some extra seat time in, uh, in rally cars and get some experience in the tarmac because we don't have very many tarmac rallies in the States. So for me, it was just a way to get uh, some extra experience. And the reason why I started making the video, videos was because the guy that was doing a series in Southern California quit doing it. And I had this specially built car just to race these Chimpano events and then nothing to do with it. So I went back to the place where I had done one of the Chimpano events, which was the El Toro Airport, and we filmed you know, that testing and practice video that ended up being so popular. Courses based on you know, different driving te techniques and different things that you know we want to do with the car. Uh, unfortunately, there's there's only so much you can do with the car from you know, fast or big slides or slums or donuts in the box. So, kind of for each course, you know, like as this course, we take those elements and move them around to try and make a fun course. And then, of course, when we do like a head-to-head uh, -head race. It's a process of then making a course that you can mirror and then run head to head. So it's a, actually a really fun process designing and developing that stuff to be able to do in, in real life because you know, so much of our, our time with the rally racing is spent so serious about getting traction and having grip and just getting down a stage as quick as possible. That's the, the Jim Connor stuff is where we actually get to be a little more creative and have a bit more fun with the car than just only worrying about traction and grip at a time. You know, working with Codemasters on the development of this game was, was really fun. They took a lot of inspiration from what I've done in real life and then taken it into the game. And the great thing about the game is that they were able to uh, expand and do a lot more in the game than, than I generally can do in real life. Uh, you know, being able to put jumps and all sorts of obstacles in, you know, the, the gameplay areas. So uh, it was really great to interact with them on, on the different ways to set things up and do things. And, and the game's just incredibly fun to play. It's, it's, uh, the, the car handles, you know, amazingly similar to, the, to my real gym kind of car. And, uh, it's just fun to go out and really experiment and play around in those areas. Hello viewers, well you're joining us at the end of a long day, we've seen Ken Block doing a bit of action. I'm joined now by Paul Coleman, Senior Game Designer for Dirt 3. So Paul, firstly, I mean it's a couple of months now since we've seen the pre-alpha build. It's moved on an awful lot. Um, graphically, you know, it seems to be a lot smoother now. Is this closer to the final build? This is very close to the final build. We're, we're about to get the game ready for its final submission. We've got a couple of weeks left, so we're just doing as much polishing as we possibly can to get this game as good as it possibly can be. So we're really excited. It's all come together now. All the features are in place, and it, it feels like a real game now, which is great. So just, again, over these multiplayer features today, we've seen a few of them. Uh, just take us through those again briefly, the um, you know Invasion, all the rest of it. Let's... Yeah, OK, so we'll start off with Invasion premises the robots are taking over Batsy so you get these cardboard cutouts spawning in the environment you've just got to drive the car around in a Gymkhana style smash those robots it's really great fun if you hit skyscrapers you get dock points as a multiplayer game it's just a scramble to see who can hit those robots first so there's, there's good shouting good good laughter when you're playing it as you've probably heard in there so yeah we're really excited by all our party modes uh, the other one is uh, transporter that's a bit more like a capture the flag style game mode you know, you pick up a flag from a location, you drop it off again. Again, it's simple fare, but it, it makes sense to have these great Gymkhana handling cars um, doing 
cool stuff as well as just uh, competing for, for trick scores. Uh, finally, we've got the outbreak mode, which uh, people have been talking quite a lot about. One player gets an infection and then they've got to spread that infection as quickly as they can. Sounds pretty dirty, but I think it fits within the franchise. So, yeah, we're really pleased with all the party modes. I think they've worked really well. And the, the amount of noise that, that goes off around the studio when we actually set up our uh, online games is great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, talking about that, I mean, we've got the green monster energy. Could have been another tie in there, you see. Opportunity missed. Well, you say that, but, I mean, we've been fed on monster for the last two months now. They've been giving us uh, a pretty much endless supply. Thanks very much to them for that. But, yeah, it's helping us do the 60-hour weeks that we need to do to get this game finished. Now, on to the serious business now on the rally modes. Uh, a lot of people see the rally. Now, today we've seen the pre-alpha. We've seen the trailblazer, and people said, oh, the rally modes are short or the rally modes are wide uh, are they representative are we going to see a, a big range of, sort of rally modes st sort of styles of stages and everything else so I, i'm a huge rally fan myself and i wanted to bring that back into the dirt franchise uh, with more seriousness so now when you go into into a rally event um, you're going to go through multiple stages within that event uh, with our weather and time of day effects that will give you a sense of progression through the day so you start off in the morning you'll get a rainy afternoon then you'll go into an evening stage and then a night stage so you'll get that sense of progression um, it's really important to me to have rally in the game and uh, people who say that our stages are short yeah they're seeing the sprint stages because they're the easiest ones that, that you know we can polish quickly to get up to a high standard to show off in previews but we've got long stages in there there are some stages that are three and a half minutes long you know so you you will be on the edge of your seat for long enough and over the course of a full rally that drags out to like 15 minutes so you know there's 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 good long stages in there and we want players to to enjoy the experience as much as possible well, just a quick question for wheel users obviously a lot of wheel users out there some games support wheels some don't wheel dirt you know, be, is, 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 is that in mind, the use of a wheel when making dirt? Definitely, our, our vehicle handling designers are absolutely on the money when it comes to wheels. If there's a wheel out there, we'll try and support it. Uh, you know, anything that's, that's regularly available will be on our support list. When we take our, our, our handling, we, um, we help the player when they're on a pad because we have to, you know, it's not, it's not easy to drive a car with a stick. But when we're on a steering wheel, we, we give it one-to-one, -one, so it's as realistic as we can possibly make it. And then if you take it with a clutch and a stick shift and you're running a Group B car down a tight Norway stage, you know, it's as real as we can get. And people have often asked me where I think the game is on a, on a sim scale. I think when you're with a pad, it's a five or a six. I think if you, if you put it with a clutch and a stick shift and, and you're on a wheel on PC, you're looking at an eight or a nine. Truly, it's, it's a fantastic experience. Awesome, well, I have to ask then, um your favourite rally stage, not just out of the ones we've seen, stuff we haven't seen. Tell me your favourite rally stage, something to look forward to. Yeah, there's a, there's a great Norway rally stage that starts off uh, at the top of the bobsleigh run and then chases you all the way down the mountain and then you end up uh, at, the, at the foot of the, uh, the ski jump at the Lillehammer Winter Olympic venue. That's fantastic. We've got some amazing Finland stages as well, really tight but fast flowing stages, real rally, rally driver's dream. Uh, and the Kenya stages, they look so great in the in the sort of evening sunset when you've got that burn burning sun just co going down over. I the know the feeling. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, Paul, thanks very much for your time, and we look forward to seeing more of the game. Absolute pleasure. So that's the end of the uh, Battersea content. Uh, more to come, and hopefully, eventually, we'll have direct feed as well. I am always working on it. Uh, hopefully, our Black Magic will decide to start working at some point. And on future recordings of gameplay, we will have some direct feed mixed in as well for you guys. But that's it for now. Uh, have a wonderful Easter, and I'll see you all soon.